If I had a remembrance book, I would mark down how it was when we left our little house in the big woods to go west to Indian Territory. We had to go, Pa said, because so many people had come to live in the big woods. There wasn't enough game anymore for him to hunt, and he feared we might go hungry. said we might never again see Grandma and Grandpa, or Aunt Dosia and Aunt Ruby and Uncle George. Though it made me sad, I still thought it a fine thing to go where there had never been a road before. We'd go where the land was more bountiful, he said. And he sold our house and land and cow to pack whatever would fit in the wagon. I was glad Pa took his fiddle, for it makes a joyous sound. could happen as long as we had Pa and Jack. Jack is my best and truest friend. And Pa says there has never been a better watchdog. I knew there would be rivers to cross and hills to climb. And I was glad. For this is a fair land and I rejoiced that I would see it.
own horses, Pa. Yeah, I know half fine, but they're just too worn out to go on. It was a kind of straightening for the ponies. But what will happen to our horses? Oh, some farmer will come along by them. They'll thrive again. Stop your fretting. I'm gonna have three ponies by midsummer. You gonna buy another one? Nope. They're going to have a baby! That's right. Gonna have a foal. Hey, Carolyn, you about ready? We're ready. Laundry's all dry. Good. They look like sturdy little animals. Uh, they are. We made a good trade. Can we give them names, Pa? Well, sure. I think we should, seeing as they're part of the family now. I want to call this one Patty. Patty it is. You better name this one Pat. He's a boy. Laura. Well, the child would be in a heap of trouble if she didn't know the difference between boys and girls. Really, Charles? Pat and Patty it is. Everybody up and away. Up we go, me love. Everybody all set back there? Yeah. All right. Kansas, here we come. Ready or not? Do you think we can get across? Yeah, I don't see why not. River swollen by spring rains, but you can tell wagons have crossed here before by the wheel ruts running through. Water looks so wild. Don't worry. Wagon sound, the ponies are stout. We'll be all right. Ah. Yeah. Yeah.
wash downstream. I'll get him. You think he drowned, Charles? Looks like it. We could look again tomorrow. I followed the river for miles. He's gone. Don't know how we're going to manage without a good watchdog. I'll see to the ponies. Children asleep. All but Laura. How much longer, Charles? Till we settle? I don't know. We crossed into Kansas four days ago. What are you looking for? I'll know it when I see it. But the children are tired, and the joy seems to have gone out of all of It'll us. It'll pass, Carolyn. We had no future where we were. It was a hand-to-mouth existence at best. I want more than that for you and the children. 60 acres free and clear from the government. Chance to plant and harvest my own crops, to be owing to no man. I want that. Huh? I heard something. It's all right, just the wind through the grass. It wasn't the wind.
We've come so far. How did he find us? Instinct. Love. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for bringing our dear and good friend back to us. Sorry about what, Hepburn? Sorry for thinking you didn't care about Jack being drowned. Didn't care. I blame myself for not putting him in the wagon when we crossed. I should have taken into account how tired he was. I was just full of guilt for letting him drown. But you only said you were sorry we didn't have a good watchdog anymore. I guess I just couldn't find the words to say it was in my heart, Hepburn. See a lot more of them. They're called dick sisters. Dicky birds? It's dumb to talk baby talk. They're dick sisters. I can call them dicky birds if I want to. The Bible says thou shalt not argue before breakfast. It's not in the Bible, Charles. Well, it ought to be. There's no need to forget your manners. Just because we're hundreds of miles from civilized folk. There's the folks in Independence that take too kindly to hearing you call them uncivilized. Independence? Mm-hmm. Are we near there? Best I can figure, maybe 40, 50 miles away. Oh, I can hardly wait to get there. We're not going there. Why not? Oh, it would be so good to see a town and people again. Colonel, we didn't come all this way to see a town. just tired, <sighs> like the rest of us. Here. <laughs> oh, 
now, Engels family. How's it look? All we gotta do now is build it. Sit down. I'll be all right in a minute. You both use a rest. Sit down now. Oh. There's no work for a woman. I never should let you do it. I'm all right, I said. And you can't raise the walls by yourself. I never should have settled where there was no man to give me a hand. It's my fault for bringing you out here. It's not your fault. It is we're out here because it's where I want to be. I took you away from your home, your family. Now, that's nonsense. My home is where you are. And you and the children are my family. Ellen Ingalls, I love you. He's a bachelor. Settle on the other side of the creek. And Carolyn Amari's gonna come over and help us put up the cabin. How kind of him. He's a wonderful man. You're gonna like him. Oh, I know I will. <laughs> Ten foot if it's an inch. Can I do it too? Well, now, that goes. Uh, it ain't easy unless you gotta plug it on the back up. Well, you can try it if you want. Come on now. Work yourself up a good mouthful of spit. Come on, work around. Around around. You got it? All right now. Here we go. It's all in the neck. Ready? Laura. Just what do you think you're doing? Mr. Edwards is teaching me how to spit. Spit? Do you consider that a worthy accomplishment, Mr. Edwards? Well, I don't know how worthy it is, ma'am. Sure comes in handy in a stiff breeze. Best get back to work. Mighty fine lunch, ma'am. He is uncivilized. I bet he's a little rough around the edges, but it's because he hasn't had the advantage of the refining influence of a good woman. Well, I can imagine the kind of women he's known. I don't like having him around the children, Charles. Especially Laura. For some reason, she's taken to him. So have I. He's a good man. He's been kind to us. I expect you to be civil and friendly to I him. I am civil, but I will not be friendly. I doubt he's ever seen the inside of a church. I hardly think that's any way to judge a man. An awful lot of pious churchgoers who wouldn't think twice of doing some poor old widow woman out of her pittance. See you the ponies. I'm going to bed. You coming? Good night. I'll be friendly. But my heart won't be in it. Good night.
I don't think it's too small. And it really looks sturdy. When do you think we can move in, Charles? As soon as I get the roof on. Huh? Well, how long will that take? Tomorrow soon enough? Tomorrow? You can't make a roof in one day. I can take the wagon cam and stretch it over the top. That suit you? Yes. Well, I guess I better start supper. Mr. Edwards, will you stay to supper? We're only having stewed rabbit and dumplings, of course. Got yourself a customer, ma'am. Been eating so much jerky lately, just thinking on it's enough to make me up, Chuck. Let's get back to work. You sure can fiddle, Ingles. You sure can dance, Edward. <laughs> Play some more, Pa. Uh, no more. It's time for bed. Can't we stay up just a little bit longer, please? No. It's past your bedtime now. There's lots to do tomorrow. We all need our rest. Yeah, that sure is the truth. Yeah, I'd best be moving on. Right. Here you go. All right, girls. Off to bed. Well, I sure do want to thank you, ma'am. I don't ever recall tasting better rabbit. Them dumplings of yours wasn't weighed down with that delicious gravy. Well, it took off like birds, is that light. Thank you. Well, I'll uh, see you soon. Night off. Take care. I'll play at home. Yeah, here you talk. Get out the way for old Dan Tucker. He's too late to get his supper. Supper's over and the dishes washed. Nothing left but a piece of squash. If I had a remembrance book, I would mark down in it that this was a fine night. Even if I did have to go to bed too soon. Kind of foolish sweeping a dirt floor, isn't it? It's the only floor we have. Hardwood floor when I get the time. I'm doing the best I can. I'm not complaining. I'm worried about the girls' schooling. I can manage for now. But Mary has her heart set on being a school teacher. She'll need formal training eventually. We'll worry about that when the time comes. I'm 
sorry. There's another thing. I don't see how the girls can grow up properly without going to church. I don't see how they can get closer to God than they are right here. Stop worrying. Everything's gonna be fine. Do you realize something? Hmm? We're alone. Edgy. That's to be expected now that she's so close to her time. What if she dies when she has her fall? She won't. We mustn't even think such a thought. We couldn't get along without the ponies. She'll do fine, won't she, Pa? You bet she will, have fine. Well, it looks to me like you're gonna do a heap of washing tomorrow. You'll have to bring some water from the creek. Sure, it'd be a lot easier if you could go down and wash the clothes at the creek like Indian women do. If I wanted to live like an Indian, I'd live in a tent. Wage would be the cleanest tent in the territory. <laughs> when will we see some Indians, Pa? Never, I hope. My sentiments, exactly. Don't even mention Indians. I hope I never see one. Then why did we come to Indian territory? <laughs> I suppose it does sound pretty foolish, coming to Indian territory and hoping you'll never see an Indian. We get right to the folks, Charles. They must be wondering how we've fared. Then write. Well, how would I post it? I'll post it for you when I go to Independence for supplies. When will that be? Well, uh, let me see. As soon as I finish the stable for the ponies, put a roof on the house, dig a well, build a fireplace so you can cook indoors. Unless, of course, you'll settle for a hole in the roof to let the smoke out the way the Indians do. We'd better start with the stable. We don't want the wolves getting at the ponies. I'm going to go see how Patty is. You'll do no such thing. Get back in bed. Now it's time for you two to go to bed. It's getting late. Good night, Mary. Good night, Pa. And as for you, don't you fret. Patty's going to be just fine. You understand? Yes, Pa. Sir, this old bear and me, we just sort of, sort of circle one another. Like they was getting each other's measure. Well, we just circled, circled. Finally, I, I was just plumb out of patience. I looked at the bear and I said, Quare in the eye, and I said, Bear, we're going to wrestle. Let's get on with it. You know what that bear done? What? Well, sir, he just, he snipped and ambled off. <laughs> A good whiff of Mr. Edwards would drive any bear off. <laughs> hey, Edwards! Huh? Use a hand now. Oh, sure is one for getting things done, ain't he? He's just worried about the wolves. You have to get the stable up before Patty folds. Mm, do the fold any time now, so I best get cracking. Right. <laughs> He 
easy now, girl. Patty, all right, Pa? She's fine, half bite. Be a fool by morning. Laura, why don't you go in the house and get some sleep? But I want to see the baby get born. Let her stay, Carol. It's a fine thing to see a new life come into the world. He's got his own place to look after. I think he doesn't come by because he knows Ma doesn't like him. Well, I don't know that she doesn't. She don't, and I know why. Oh, is that a fact? Mm-hmm. Because he spits. <laughs> Carolyn! Come off. You be careful not to let that lie get in your eyes. It's just the fumes that make them tear. You be careful. I will. There you go, half-line. I wish I could go. Now, uh, you stop fretting. One of these days, I'll sweet talk your mom and let you go hunting with you. you. Take care. Big people have all the fun. how to take care of himself. Charles! I've been beside myself. What kept you so long? Oh, I was scared, Pa. I wasn't. Maybe I was a little worried. Uh, no need to worry. I just went a little further than I thought I would. Did you get a bear, Pa? No. No, I didn't have any luck at all. All 
right, girls, off to bed. Tuck in. Right to sleep. Get your supper. It's a nice hot stew. Sounds good. Put your biscuits in the way you like. Will they go away, Pa? Yeah, they're not too hungry. Reckon they'll go somewhere and sleep before sun up. Why did they come here? Followed me home, I guess. I'll tell you what happened when you keep it a secret. Just upset Ma. First spot on when I was on my way back. Must have been ten, maybe fifteen of them in the pack. Took out after me. Pat did his best, but I knew he couldn't outrun those wolves, not on flat ground. What'd you do? Well, I tossed them all the game I shot. Slowed them up long enough for me to get away. But you weren't scared. You bet I was scared. I didn't think Paz ever got scared. Don't let them fool you. Paz gets scared just like everybody else. But not as scared as Ma's. That's right, not as scared as Ma's. That's why it's important to keep that secret. I'd spit into the wind before I tell. That's my girl. First thing tomorrow, I'm gonna build us a proper door. just fine. Now it looks like home. You're not sorry we said to you? Of course not. But I could cry when I see how hard you have to work. It's good work. Just wish I could have made the cabin bigger. <laughs> Giving you glass window panes. <laughs> I mean it. Expect the impossible, Charles. You deserve the impossible. <laughs> yeah. Let's go find. 
find yourself a cooker in that fire, huh? Jack up before. He doesn't like it. I don't want you to free him, no matter what. But why, Pa? I don't want him following me and scaring away the game. That's one time until I get back, you understand? Yes, Pa. Take care of Carrie. She's underfoot. You take care of her. I'm not going to leave Jack out here all by his lonesome. Indian. They might hurt Ma. No, I heard Pa tell you not to untie him. He didn't know Indians were coming. I said not to. eating rabbit again. I don't. Me neither. I guess none of us does. Have a good day. Just fine. I bet you would like a smoky pipe now, Pa, wouldn't you? Yeah. After dinner, will be fine. You won't be able to. The Indians took your tobacco. Laura. What Indians? We had some visitors today. I don't get an estate. Nothing happened. 
Well, I just gave them some cornbread and your tobacco and they went away. Laura wanted to untie Jack when they came, but I didn't let her. You wanted to untie Jack after I told you not to? I don't want you ever, ever to go against an order I give you again. Do you understand? Do you understand? Laura, bring in some wood. There was no need to speak so harshly to Laura. She only wanted Jack to protect Carrie and me. I don't care what her reason was. She's going to have to learn that when I give her an order, I expect it to be obeyed. She's going to have to trust my judgment. She's just a child. You didn't want him to follow you and scare away the game. Yeah, that was only part of it. I saw a couple Indians and I was up in the bluffs the other day and I was afraid they might come by here. Jack's a watchdog. I thought he might take off after him and there might be trouble. From now on, whenever I'm away, we're gonna have to tie Jack up, even though he hates it. It's for his own good and for ours. How do you understand why? Yes, but you could have told me, Pa. I'm not a baby anymore. I guess I'll have to remember that. You said we go and tie that old dog. cattle drive. You want me to help keep the cattle out of the ravines? Will they pay you? Better than that. How'd you like some fresh beef? <gasps> we haven't had a piece of beef in ages. You going to be a cowboy, Pa? I'm gonna do my best, half mine. Be back before dark. Love you. Good luck. dark in here with the windows covered. That's better than having all those mosquitoes inside. I wish we had glass windows like in our other house. I do too, dear. But there's no use wishing for the impossible. What in the world? Gave you a cow and a calf? They're ours? <sighs> yep. Oh, look at the little one. So cute. The calf was an extra bonus because it was too little to be taken away from his mother. Now we'll have milk for the children. And butter. <laughs> Are you all right, Charles? Don't ask, Carolyn, please. Just don't ask. <laughs> I'm afraid not, Gary. The weather changed, and the air got sharp and clear. Pa said we could expect a cold winter because the fox and muskrats and beavers were growing heavy fur. Don't forget to post it. I'd be afraid to come home if I didn't. <laughs> now don't you overdo. 
You got plenty of wood cut there to last you till I get back from Independence. Girls, make sure you help your mother with the chores. Have a good trip. Be careful. I will. Don't bring. Try to bring you back some window paints. Oh, it's too expensive. See you in about a week. Bitter cold. Girls, go inside. about him being out in the weather. Though we didn't know for sure if Pa had even left Independence yet. Saints in glory stand bright, bright as day. Oh, to hear the angels sing, glory to the God, Lord.
lot more welcome if you'd put that thing down. You think we'll have enough furs by spring to trade for plow and seeds? Well, now we're going to be eating a lot of rabbit and fur chicken. Come here. Just take it easy. Vous avez bien construit. Doesn't sound like Indian talk. I think it's French. Got any idea what he said? Something to do with the cabin. Maybe he wants to go in and sit down. Come, inside. Charles. Doesn't have to be friendly, Charles. Je vous remercie pour votre hospitalité. Soldat du chêne. Uh, I think he's telling us his name. Oh. Uh, Ingalls. Ingalls. Right. Like a good smoke? Maxi? Osage. I read somewhere where they picked up French talk. Looks to me like a chief. Is that a bear claw? Laura. Amulet. Que cette amulette vous apporte bonne fortune. Thank goodness he's gone. Why? I thought it was kind of nice. Poor Indian. Well, I wouldn't be upset about it. A few months from now, there won't be an Indian left in the territory. But why not, Pa? Government's gonna make a move, half pint. Move where? Oh, west, I guess. I'm glad. I'm not. Does Dr. Shane have to go, too, even though he's a chief? I'm afraid so. It's not fair. They were here first.
turkey. Can I have the feathers to make an Indian hat? You're not an Indian. I'm practically one. I got a cheap necklace. Well, she wouldn't wear that dirty thing. It's not dirty. Pa says it's a sign of a great hunter and that it protects him from evil spirits. What's Jack barking about? hope we're not in for a blizzard. Blizzards don't stop Santa Claus, not even in Kansas. And a blizzard won't stop Mr. Edwards either. We're going to have the best Christmas ever. Christmas for the girls. Or for you. Oh, you've done the best you can. It won't be much. I guess I better go see the stock. It's bitter out. Put on something warm. Charles. Christ's birthday, not ours.
gophers and rabbits get burned up, Pa? No. I headed down the creek where they'd be safe from the fire here, Flint. It's over and we're lucky to be out of it. This is good. I knew what the Indians started the fire to burn us out. We don't know that for sure. Come on, finish the supper. Take all the jack. That's far enough. You have nothing to fear. I speak your tongue and will give you our chief's words. You can start by telling me what's going on. Il est de ma seki eseri. Dites-lui. The Osage, who are the people, came to hunt the buffalo, but the other tribes chose instead to drive out the white man. Twice the sun rose and set, while our chief made strong talk. He said the soldiers would come, and it would be the tribes who would be massacred. In the end, all saw his wisdom. Would you, uh... Would you tell your chief how grateful we are to him? El bu en rey masi.
set amulet for support, born fortune. He says, may the amulet bring her good fortune. It already has. To all of us. Thank you. I'm content to spend the rest of my days here. Even when other settlers come? There's plenty of room here for a man to breathe. Seems to me you said that very same thing when we built our house in the big woods. This time I mean it. Oh, Charles. What is it? We have to get out. What? Yeah, the Kansas tribe petitioned Washington. We have to get out. I don't understand. The government drew a new line, and we're on the wrong side, so we have to go. Those blasted politicians in Washington had just said all of Kansas wasn't open up, we never would have settled here.
have any choice. The wagon's too heavy as it is. We'll have to leave. I'll be holding to you. Never did get a chance to come over to your place and give you a hand the way I should have. I'd like you to take the cow and calf. You can sell them in independence. Call do that. Won't rest easy unless you take him. It appears there ain't no talking you out of it. All right, then. Hope you find what you're looking for. You too, Ringo. Well, bye, ma'am. Been a pleasure knowing you. Mr. Hedford's. You have been a true and devoted friend. I want to thank you for all you've done for the children. And for us. Well, wouldn't all that much, ma'am. Goodbye, buddy. <laughs> Feels like it's time to say goodbye. I don't want to. Well, me neither, half pint, but, uh. I'll never, never forget you, Mr. Well, I hope not. Because I'll be remembering you. Thank you.